Hello, listeners. This is Kat, and welcome back to Put Your Hands Up Potvix. This will be the continuation of Spirit. This will be Part 3, Chapter 3, entitled Haunt. A few weeks pass. Izuku slowly breaks out of his shyness and gets used to living with Aizawa and Hizachi. Obara was there a lot, flickering in and out at seemingly random times to talk to Izuku. Izuku's new parents take a lot of time off of work to stay home with him, bonding and making him feel comfortable. Izuku is a quiet kid, mostly lost in his own head. When Izashi and Aizawa take him places, he just clings to one of their hands and tries not to get overwhelmed by ghosts all around them. Izuku learns quickly that it's impossible to tell at a glance if he's looking at a ghost or an alive person, so seeing and meeting new people is hard for him. He even discovers that he can see the ghosts of animals, eyes widening when his parents ask him one day what he's holding. He looks down at the cat in his lap, realizing instantly that the cat isn't alive. It's a lot to take in. He doesn't talk to any human ghosts on purpose except Obero, feeling a little scared of his new quirk. Obero is gentle and kind, but some of the ghosts Izuku sees are scary and angry, and he's too scared to talk to them. So, he spends most of his time inside, talking to his parents, Obero, or curled up, reading a book or writing in his notebook. Izuku draws Obero a lot, feeling a sense of responsibility to help him feel connected to something, since... Izuku figures the teenager's probably bored of just talking to Izuku all the time. One sunny afternoon, Izuku changes into a pair of shorts and a t-shirt, grabbing Aizawa's hand as the three of them head out to a nearby park. Obro shows up, walking next to Izuku with his hands in his pockets, keeping his kind eyes on Izuku as they walk. Izu, this park is really fun, Izashi exclaims with a smile, swinging Izuku's hand. It's got a big slide, a swing set, and a jungle gym. You'll have a blast, kid. Izuku just nods. Okay, Dad. He misses the look on Hizashi's face at Izuku calling him Dad, but Izuku doesn't think much of it. Aizawa and Hizashi are his dads. He doesn't think he could ever call someone else Mom, only Inko Midoriya, but having dads is nice. He's been dropping Dad more and more often into the conversations, glad that his new parents seem to like it. Look, we're almost here, Aizawa murmurs, pointing at the park. And look, it's not crowded today either. That'll be nice. Izuku looks ahead, and his stomach sinks. He still has trouble telling dead people from alive people, but in this case, it's pretty easy to tell the crowd in front of him are dead. Aizawa said it wasn't crowded, but it's the exact opposite to Izuku. There's a large group of ghosts congregating in the center of the park, all of them in old, funny-looking clothes, standing in confusion. Most of them are silent, but Izuku can hear some of them wailing. Oh, bro, what's going on? Izuku asks, a little scared. Hizashi and Aizawa don't interrupt, starting to get used to their son talking to their dead friend, as weird of a situation as the apparent one-sided conversations are. Obero looks grim. Not sure. I think there was an accident here a long time ago, though. They seem... stuck. Like they don't know they're dead. I can go talk to them, but I think you should stay out of this, kiddo. In my experience, they're probably going to get mad. Get mad? Izuku asks, eyes wide with fear as he clings tightly to Hizashi's hand. At me? Who's mad at you, kid? Aizawa asks gruffly. It better not be you, Obero. Obero snorts. Please. Izuku, tell your dad he's being an idiot. I'm going to handle this. Izuku dutifully repeats this to Aizawa, who looks like he might have an aneurysm. Before Izuku can explain further, Obero heads off to the crowd of ghosts. Izuku doesn't move to play on the playground, his eyes locked on the ghosts. Sure enough, just like Obero said, soon the crowd of ghosts start yelling and wailing. Izuku gasps, the noise rising and rising until he can't take it anymore. The ghosts begin surging past him in a blur, the cacophonous noise too much to bear. Izuku kneels down, hands clamped over his ears as the voices blur in his head, overwhelmed by the spirits around him. After a few long, terrible minutes, the noise subsides and Izuku looks up, tear tracks on his face as his worried dads kneel in front of him, asking him what's wrong. Obro is gone too, and Izuku's face scrunches up as he starts to cry. T too many, Izuku chokes out as Aizawa picks him up, soothing him as best he can. Too many ghosts. It's so loud. Aizawa continues to soothe him. As they turn around and head back home, Izuku crying the whole way. When they walk inside, Aizawa kicks off his shoes and immediately heads for the couch, Izuku burying his face against him. Izashi walks over, gently taking off Izuku's own shoes before putting them down and sitting next to them on the couch. Daddy, I'm scared, 
Izuku manages to mumble as they both soothe him. Izuku feels a little better being home, but Oboro was still gone, and the ghost had really frightened him. You're all right now, Izashi says gently, leaning over to kiss Izuku's forehead. Sho, I think it's time for a quick counseling appointment. We've waited long enough. Aizawa looks grim, sharing a look with Izashi that Izuku doesn't understand. He just lets himself be comforted, sniffling on his dad's chest. He doesn't see Oboro for a while. Two days later, Izuku and his parents are walking through the doors of the Musutafu Children's Quirk Center for his first quirk counseling session. His parents have been oddly tense all morning, and Izuku's not really sure why. He is too, but it's mainly because he hasn't seen Oboro since the park, and he's worried about his friend. After checking in at the front desk of the Quirk Center, the receptionist points them toward the staircase to the right, where the Paranormal Quirk Department is located. Apparently, the department is in the basement of the building, which sounds a little scary to Izuku. They walk down the stairs into a hallway that seems long and a little dark. They pass a lot of different offices until they come to a door at the very back. There's a small sign that reads Paranormal Department on it, and Izuku watches his parents share a look before walking inside. The moment the door opens, Izuku's jaw drops. He sees a see-through kid running around on the floor, another kid who looks almost like a walking skeleton and several exhausted-looking parents. A little girl about Izuku's age keeps popping in and out of view, giggling as she plays tag with a boy who doesn't seem to have eyeballs. Izuku understands a bit more why his parents have chosen to go incognito today. Aizawa has his hair tied back in a ponytail and is wearing a blue button-down shirt and jeans, nothing like the usual black of his hero costume. Izashi has his hair tied back too, not wearing anything that even remotely looks like present Mike. He's got on a black shirt and khaki pants, both looking very much like Dad's. They walk Izuku up to the reception desk, where a girl that's a bit older than Oboro is sitting in front of the computer. Izuku's fascinated to see that it appears that her body is glowing, her eyes an odd red color. She also has a giant hat with a taxidermy bird on her head. Izuku Aizawa Yamada, Aizawa says calmly, checking in for a 9.30 consultation. She stares at them both, eyeing Izuku for a moment before handing Hizashi a tablet. Fill out these forms and take a seat she says in a bored tone, munching on what looks like a chicken bone. Doc will be with you in a bit. They move to sit in the corner of the room, Izuku swinging his legs on the chair as his dads fill out the paperwork. Izuku watches the other kids with interest, gasping a little when a cat jumps in his lap seemingly from nowhere. Izuku's pretty sure it's a ghost cat, reaching out to scratch its ears. Hi, kitty, Izuku murmurs, both his parents looking down at him. They, of course, see nothing, Izuku looking like he's petting air. You can see Merlin? A kid asks him from the floor. Izuku looks up eyes wide when he sees a boy in front of him about ten years old. He looks normal save for the fact that half of his face is gone, and his skeleton is showing underneath. Yes, Izuku says, petting the cat, Merlin, gently. Is he your cat? Yeah, the boy grins, fist pumping. No way, you can see me too? We both died in an accident here a few years ago. Not many people can see us. Izuku considers that, continuing to pet Merlin while remembering his manners. My name's Izuku. Who are you? I'm Kenji, the kid grins, sitting cross-legged and floating upside down. Just call me the resident poltergeist. I like to stir up trouble when I get bored. Izuku's interested. He's never met a poltergeist before, but his dad's had gotten him a new book about all different kinds of ghosts. Poltergeists like to cause mischief and get into all sorts of shenanigans. Some of them aren't very nice, but Kenji seems okay. Aizawa Yamada, the receptionist calls, pulling Izuku's attention from Merlin and Kenji. The doc's ready to see you. Izuku stands up, Merlin hopping to the floor. Izuku waves at Kenji and Merlin, saying a polite goodbye before he walks through the door to the doctor's office with his parents. As they walk in, Izuku's immediately stunned. The office is nothing like the rest of the building. It has floor-to-ceiling dark wooden bookshelves. There's no windows, since they're in the basement, and the walls are covered in a dark floral wallpaper. In between the crammed bookshelves are large oil paintings, each surrounded by an intricate gold frame. On the shelves, there are dozens of odd devices, little black boxes with an antenna on them, spinning metal things, and other inventions that Izuku can't name. Come in, come in, the doctor calls from behind an ornate wooden desk. It's an older man with dark skin and eyes, his white hair sticking up in all directions. He's wearing goggles over his eyes and looking at Izuku with a grin. So, I hear we have a little medium with us, is that right, Izuku? 
the man asks, clapping his hands together. Izuku cocks his head to the side, not understanding the question. Forgive me, I'm getting ahead of myself, the doctor says with a smile. Please sit, all of you. My name is Dr. Tanaka, but most people just call me Gravedigger. Gravedigger? Izashi asks, sounding a bit wary for reasons Izuku doesn't quite understand. That's an interesting name. It's the name of my quirk, the doctor replies calmly. I can touch the ground anywhere and sense who's buried underneath it, or if anyone died there. Sounds a little scary to Izuku, but his mom and his dads have taught him to be respectful and nice of others, so he doesn't mention it being a little scary. There are some who don't believe paranormal quirks are real, the doctor tells them calmly. Izuku will face a lot of prejudice. You're both pro-heroes, aren't you? Aizawa looks grim. Yes, we are. I'm underground, but Izashi is present Mike. Ah, yes, my granddaughter loves your radio show, the doctor says calmly. He talks with Izuku's dads for a bit, and Izuku's distracted, looking around the office with big eyes. He's taken aback by a glass case with a human skull in it, looking at it for a while before he hears someone ask him a question. Well, Izuku, are you ready for your quirk assessment? The doctor asks, and Izuku nods, swinging his feet on the too tall chair. All right, good, the doctor smiles. Your parents tell me that you can see and talk to ghosts. Can you tell me more about that? Izuku explains everything with Oboro, with the ghosts he sees, the incident of the part, even talks briefly about seeing his mom the night she died. Explains seeing Kenji and Merlin in the waiting room. The doctor's eyebrows raise up at that. Fascinating, the doctor says when Izuku's done talking. Very few people can see Kenji. I can't myself, but I know he died here about fifty years ago. Before this was a quirk center, it was an apartment building. Kenji and his cat were killed when the building collapsed in an earthquake. He's been here ever since. Izuku nods, very intrigued. The doctor taps his chin for a moment before asking Izuku more questions about Obero and their interactions. You haven't seen him since the incident in the park? The doctor asks, folding his hands. Izuku nods, feeling sad. I wouldn't worry, Izuku. Ghosts have limited energy. Obero probably just exhausted himself trying to talk to the other spirits. I'm sure he'll show up again soon. Izuku's relieved at the reassurance, smiling up at his parents. The doctor asks him more questions, and Izuku answers them. And after a long hour, he gets a quirk evaluation and a name. Please, I strongly encourage you both to do your research, the doctor tells Hizashi and Aizawa as they're finishing the appointment. Izuku's quirk is rare, and most people will not accept it readily. He will face a lot of hard times, both from the living and the dead. I'm happy to work with him any time and would be honored to continue to give him counseling sessions. Thank you, Izashi says earnestly, taking the papers from the doctor that list Izuku's quirk. We'll be in touch. They check out, Izuku says goodbye to Kenji and Merlin, and they head back up the stairs and out of the quirk center. Izuku sees worry on both of his parents' faces, and he feels bad, tucking on Aizawa's hand. Daddy, what's wrong? Izuku asks. Are you sad? No, kid. Aizawa sighs, sharing another look with Izashi, before picking Izuku up and holding him against his chest. We just have a lot to think about from the doctor, that's all. Come on, let's go home. That night, Izuku's parents give him a very long talk about how some people aren't nice and won't believe Izuku's quirk is real, about how some people with paranormal quirks are called mean names sometimes, people thinking that they're lying. But we know you're honest, Izuku, Izashi tells him firmly. We believe you, and so will the people who love you. This quirk is real. Your powers are amazing, and you're going to grow up to do wonderful things. Izuku nods, a little overwhelmed as his parents show him his quirk counseling appointment notes. He can't read most of it, but Izashi reads it aloud to him. Quirk. Haunt. Description. User, Aizawa Yamada Izuku, is able to see, hear, and effectively communicate with ghosts, identified here as the spirits of those no longer alive. User is unaware of how the ghosts appear and disappear. Focus on future summoning slash possession abilities and attempts. User should be in regular therapy sessions, see attached resources, talking to your child about death, and discrimination in the quirk community. All right, listeners, this concludes Chapter 3 of Spirit. Chapter 4 will be up next. I hope you all are still enjoying this fic, eager to hear your thoughts and reactions, and as always, thank you so much for listening.